everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah from Pies and Pros, and we are doing another one of our social media tips videos today. I know you have been impatiently waiting for one of these, so I am very excited to bring you another one today. And if you didn't know, I have been doing this little workshop series here on my YouTube channel where I talk about different kinds of social media tips to help you grow, uh, more specifically on the Instagram side. I've had many blogs, I have Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all sorts of different channels, so this isn't only for Instagram, but it's a main focus because I spend most of my time on that. So I did a poll over on my Instagram, as I do. Uh, if you want to get access to those, you can definitely check out my Instagram. But I did a poll. I asked you what you specifically wanted to see for today's video and most of the votes were for hashtags. So as you can see from the title, we're talking about hashtags, hashtags 101, and everything that you wanna know about it. We're gonna be talking about what are hashtags, are they important, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. We're gonna debunk some myths that are circulating on the internet about hashtags. And I forgot to say this last time, but uh, these videos are a little bit lengthy because I try to go into detail as much as possible and explain as much as I can about the topic that we're talking about. So uh, I apologize if this is a little bit on the longer side, but there's a lot of information here and I think it'll be really helpful to you. So stick around if you are interested in that. What are hashtags? If you don't know what hashtags are at this point, you've got some learning to do. So this is going to be the perfect video for you. Hashtags are basically, oh, a way for you to categorize your posts. So when it comes to Instagram and you add a hashtag to your Instagram post or wherever it is that you're adding your hashtag, it categorizes into sort of like a community-like section on Instagram. Phrase or the topic that you talk about in your hashtag, your post will go there. Think about it as a way of finding certain posts based on a topic in a very simplified way. Instead of going into the search bar and just searching a bunch of different words and trying to find accounts and posts that way, you can search a hashtag and you can find everything that is associated with that hashtag underneath it. For example, if we're talking about gray hair, I can post a selfie, I can do hashtag gray hair, and people who are interested in looking for gray hair, they search that hashtag, my post is gonna show up, I have gray hair, there you go. So it's like a filtering, a categorization, you you feel me, I, ho I hope that made sense. Now, are they important? Yes, they are extremely important. I know that's not something that people wanna hear because hashtags are complicated and confusing and sometimes we don't know how to work them out quite accurately, but the problem isn't the hashtags, the problem is the way that people explain them online. So we're here to explain what hashtags are, make them very simplified so we're not afraid of them, and yeah, we're gonna be using them because they're important and they will be important for the ongoing future. They're not going anywhere. Hashtags are important because they help people find your page, help them find your post. And this gives you visibility, this gives you growth. And the Discover page has been made so that you can easily find content that you're interested in, but it's a lot trickier to get on the Discover page because it's a limited space, of course. You know, it's sort of more of a competition that way. With hashtags, there is a competition, but anybody can use a hashtag. Anybody has the choice to put the hashtag into their posts, and so, people find you that way. It's one of the best tools that you can use on your own to help people find you. Okay, so what should you do when it comes to hashtags? We're gonna go through a handful of different things. So the biggest thing that you need to do when you're talking about hashtags is do your research. Now, research is a task. It takes up a lot of time, I understand. And unfortunately, when it comes to hashtags, you just have to do that. You just, you have to. Otherwise, you aren't gonna get the results that you want from them. I know social media is a really quick fix and you wanna get that quick uh, growth, but with hashtags, you have to do your research in order to find the perfect ones for your post. And guess what? They're different for each post that you make. There is work to be done there, uh, but after this video, maybe it'll be a little bit easier with your research. Maybe you'll have a good direction on where to go with your research. When you're starting your research, you need to focus on being as niche as possible. What does that mean? So let's take one of my posts, for example. 
I just went on a getaway trip, so I took a lot of photos there, and I've been posting them. Now, let's take a look at the photo. I'm gonna try to put it like right here so that you can see. When we look at this photo, what is the topic of this photo? What kind of topics or interests, keywords, phrases that we can associate with this photo? I do cozy, I do aesthetics, uh, neutral tones, brown tones, autumnal vibes, uh, cabin in the woods. So as you can see, I'm not just saying autumn. I'm not just saying brown. I'm saying things that are very niche and very specific words. Now I know that sounds scary because you feel like you're gonna miss out on some people if you aren't vague. But the problem is, is that it gets buried if you're too vague. So you actually need to be more niche than not. And while we're at that, the more niche that you are, and actually the more exclusive that you make that niche hashtag, the easier it is for people to find you. When audiences look for very specific niches and very specific topics, they're gonna go through these hashtags and because it's a smaller audience, you get more visibility. I think, I hope that makes sense. So again, looking at the photo, uh, we can use these word associations, we can use these topics and interests to associate with the photo that I took, and these become hashtags. So this is sort of your way of starting your research, knowing what direction to go to. On top of knowing what direction you need to go to, I would suggest starting with those very general um, hashtags, like say autumn aesthetic, and search that hashtag. When you search that hashtag, you're going to see posts, of course. See what posts are doing well. I would suggest looking at the top tab as opposed to the recent tab to see who's doing really well in that hashtag. When you look at those posts and you can see how well they're doing, try to look at that post and see why it's doing well. How is the caption shaped? How is the photo related to the hashtag? And then see what that user is using as well. You can see what hashtags they're using and you can sort of gather um, hashtags from a combination of different places. But if you really have no idea where to start, this is a good way to find some hashtags. So this is the way that you kick start your research and you just take it from there. Another thing that you should do, and this relates to the niche hashtags and what you should add onto your posts or your or anything that you're posting is to be specific as possible to the exact post. Um, what I mean is, like I said with the getaway photo, when I post my getaway photos, not only do I add my cozy aesthetic, autumn aesthetic hashtags that are in that niche, but I also throw in a couple of hyper, hyper niche hashtags such as getaway cabin, cabin in the woods, um, tiny cabin house, those are extremely specific to the post itself. Now, the entire vibe of the photo is cozy aesthetic, autumn aesthetic, et cetera, et cetera, but what is specific to that photo? What is concrete in that photo that you can use as a hashtag? Getaway house, because I was at the getaway house. Say my caption is talking about something, for example, I'm talking about horror podcasts. I can put in the hashtags, horror podcasts recommendations, something like that. And it's very specific to what I was talking about in the caption. So those also matter too. As long as you're being extremely specific and it pertains to what you are talking about and what you are presenting in your post, you can use that. You'll direct the right audience to you and that causes growth, that causes long lasting um, relationships. You should be adding your hashtags to every single kind of post that you're posting on Instagram. That goes for posts, that goes for IGTV, reels, and stories. Anything that you can do on Instagram, you should be posting hashtags along with it. Now I explained this in the uh, other video that I posted, my first ever Instagram insights video, but you should be utilizing hashtags wherever possible because, again, this is how you are seen. So if you want your story to be seen, if you want your IGTV to be seen, etc., etc., put a hashtag in there. The example that I used in that video was about my hair, and I do get a lot of unique and new visitors on my page when I use that hashtag about my hair. So if you want to check that out, it's in that other video. I'll link it in the description, but 
they are effective. So use it any and everywhere. Once you've got your research, once you've got your direction of where you're going and you post your hashtags wherever you gotta post it, track your progress on this. Now this is something that a lot of people forget and a lot of people had questions about this in my, in my previous videos. Like, I've done everything that you've done, I'm listening to what you're saying, I'm trying these things out and I'm not seeing results or I don't know why it's not working for me. And the problem is why I can't answer those questions directly is because everybody's account is different. Use your insights to see how well your hashtags are doing. This is possible with Instagram insights. And like I said before, Instagram insights are free. You have to sign up for a business account in order to, to see these insights, but it is free to sign up as a business account. It doesn't harm your account if you have a business account and it gives you access to really fantastic free analytic tools. When you go into your insights, you can actually see, at least when it comes to your main feed posts, you can see who came, like a number of people that came directly from your hashtags that you used. So say, I think in the insights, it will tell you different locations as to how your, your post was found. There is a section that says from hashtag. This is extremely helpful and you should definitely use that. If you see that you're not getting much traffic from the hashtags that you use on this one particular post and your post didn't do well and you feel like that was a factor because it didn't do well from the hashtag that you use, now you know. You need to switch up your hashtags. You need to do some more research. You need to fine tune that a little bit more. And if they are doing well, keep those hashtags in your back pocket, use them. But I'll go into a little bit later about not constantly repeating using the hashtags that you use because that will also backfire. Now to segue exactly what I was just talking about, what things you should not do when it comes to hashtags, and I just mentioned this, you should not overuse or repeat use the same hashtags constantly. Don't abuse that. And I know it might be confusing because I said if those hashtags are effective, obviously you run a, you're gonna wanna keep using them. But the thing is, if you constantly abuse those hashtags, it can be seen as spammy behavior. And I mentioned this in the other video, we don't want to be spammy. That's like the last thing that you want to do on Instagram. Instagram will penalize you very quickly and with no notice. Sometimes, most of the times, sometimes. So you don't want to be spammy whatsoever. Give your hashtags a break or so, you know? Give it a couple of days before you repeat you some hashtags. Mix it up. Do a little bit of a scramble with the hashtags that you have saved, the ones that work and some new ones. Just don't do anything repeatedly in mass or anything that can be remotely spammy. I know you might think that you're not being spammy, but let's remember Instagram is not a person. Instagram is an app. It has analytics, it has robots, it's got algorithms behind it that is just analyzing based on what it, it knows. It's, it doesn't have human error. So it doesn't know that you, you don't mean to be spammy. So you have to be careful with that. Another thing that you should not do when it comes to hashtags is use extremely large hashtags. Hashtags started at a place where you can put mood as a hashtag and it was fine. At this point, I'm pretty sure the hashtag mood has billions of um, content underneath it. And that's something that has gotten inflated to a point where it's useless. And that, I spoke about this before, but hashtags that are like that, your, your post is gonna get buried in a matter of seconds. So it really is useless. No one is going to those hashtags to find anything at that point. Hashtags like that are being used for spam accounts. And again, that can be flagged by Instagram. They might think that you're being spammy. They might think you're a spam account and they might penalize your account and give you far less visibility because you used a really bad hashtag. Think of it like a flame and you accidentally put that flame onto your account and now your account's on fire because Instagram saw that flame and just decided to extinguish it. You don't even wanna to get to a line of potentially looking like a spam account according to these algorithms. So don't use them. If you're confused about which hashtags are completely blown out and possibly spammy, test a few. Go into your search bar and test out the hashtags that you are planning to use. And when you type them in and you see that one has several million, 
you might want to remove that from your list of hashtags to use. I would say it's preferable to stay under a million when it comes to hashtags. That's preferable. Sometimes hashtags as little as a couple hundred is extremely beneficial to you. So keep that in mind. Just because it's bigger and more vague and you feel like you're going to get a larger audience does not mean that it's actually going to happen. It might actually damage your account. So just keep that in mind. Another thing and the last thing that you should not do when it comes to hashtags is use hashtags that have nothing to do with your content. I understand the desire, the deep, deep desire to have as many people come onto your account as possible, but if you're not using your hashtags responsibly, people are not going to like that. For example, if I'm posting about the autumn aesthetic and I use a hashtag that has to do with cars and my post with my, you know, cozy vibes and whatnot shows up under the cars uh, hashtag, people who are actually interested in cars are not going to like the fact that I'm there, first of all, and they're definitely not going to engage with me, second of all, so it, there's no benefit to it. So don't even. There are plenty of hashtags that you can use that will benefit you, and it's just not worth using ones that have nothing to do with what you're talking about. What you're trying to do with hashtags is get people who are interested in your content to come see your content. And the only people that are coming to see are the people who are searching about the stuff that you're posting. You feel me? Okay, so there's a couple of myths that are widely known and I'm going to debunk them. The first one is using too many hashtags can be seen as spam in itself. And this is not true. It's just not. For the most part, Instagram will let you know when you are being spammy. They will tell you, they will stop you, whether they stop you on an aggressive note or more like, hey, can you chill out kind of note, they will let you know. The fact that they cap their hashtags for your main posts at 30 says you can use 30 or less. You aren't a bad person if you use 29 or 30 hashtags. Trust me, you're fine. You can use as many as possible. And if you hit 31, Instagram will tell you, you use too many hashtags. So don't worry about it. There's no weird mystery about it. Um, whoever tries to tell you that is lying. Uh, you can use as many as you want and Instagram is not gonna penalize you for using the max that they allow. It's fine if you don't use 30. If you use 15, if you use 10, if you use five, that's also fine. What matters most isn't the number. What matters most is how effective your hashtags are. So focus on that as opposed to quantity. Quantity is not better than quality. We all know that, we, we know this, okay? So you understand, you, you get me. Another myth is that where you place your hashtags matters. So when it comes to should I put my hashtags in my comments? Should I put my hashtags in my caption? Should I show my hashtags on my Instagram stories, etc.? No, no, it doesn't matter. It has no effect on how effective your hashtags are. You can put them anywhere you want. What matters when it comes to that is how you want your post to look. So it's purely aesthetic. It's purely just on appearance. Personally, I don't like my hashtags to be shown in my caption. I just don't like how it looks. I like it to be a little bit more clean and uniform. So I put my hashtags in my comments. They work just fine. How do I know that they work just fine? I go into my Instagram insights and if they pull out information and insights based on hashtags, that means my hashtags are working because where did they get the insights from, right? So it's working. And I've seen this on my Instagram stories as well. I will hide my Instagram story hashtags and I will know if somebody's clicking on those hashtags, I can see the insights. So that proves that it works. So you're fine. You can use them wherever you want. All right, so I actually sped through that way quicker than I thought. Uh, hopefully that doesn't mean that I missed anything. And I know these are commonly asked questions. I know people are really focused on that. I know people are gonna come into the comments and ask me specific questions about specific hashtags. Remember, I am not an expert on all things Instagram. I don't work for Instagram. I'm just a user of Instagram, and so I'm not an expert on every single hashtag. I will suggest that if you're confused about a hashtag, the best thing that you can do is just look it up. Just type it into your search bar on Instagram and you can see. But if you are confused and you need a little bit of guidance, you can absolutely send feedback in the comments 
send me your questions, whatever you've got, if you've had any situations that you want me to cover in a follow-up, I am happy to help. And I'm not in this to lie to you or hide anything from you. I want everyone to grow. I want everyone to succeed with their growth and whatever it is that you're doing with your growth. Hopefully you're doing good with that. Um, I don't condone any bad stuff. So, <laughs> um, but again, I'm not responsible for that. I hope you liked this video. Definitely give it a like if you did and subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. Again, this is a series, so there will be more videos pertaining to social media tips coming. And if you have any specific questions or suggestions for this series, I'm doing this for you. So feel free to send those in the comments or talk to me on Instagram, whatever you wanna do. I'll see you in the next one.